medication that we're going to discuss today is possibly the most repeatedly asked question when it comes to cardiac medications. No surprises, it's digoxin. So digoxin is a positive inotrop and a negative chronotrop. What does inotrop mean? So inotrop effect refers to the ability of the heart to contract and chromotropic refers to the speed at which the heart rate beats. So when I say positive inotrop, it increases the contractility and negative chronotrop means it reduces the heart rate. So basically what your digitalis or digoxin does is it reduces the heart rate while it increases the contractility. So it's a second line of choice or second drug of choice for cardiac failure patients. With digoxin, it is very, very important that as a nurse, you know what to do before you administer digoxin, what to watch out for once you've administered digoxin and the education that you need to give to your patient. What do you do before you administer digoxin? First and foremost, check the apical pulse. When I talk about the apical pulse, I'm not talking about the peripheral one. Do not make the mistake of checking the peripheral pulse instead of the apical pulse. There has once been a question with NCLEX wherein they had asked that what would you do if a nurse checked the peripheral pulse before administering digoxin. And that option was wrong because it's not any pulse that you check, specifically and only apical pulse. Where would you check it? You would check it at a point of maximum impulse. Where is the point of maximum impulse? fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line where you can feel the heart at its best or at the apex of the heart is where you see the point of maximum impulse and that is where you check the apical pulse now if the apical pulse is less than 60 you hold digoxin do not administer digoxin wait until you consult with the physician see if there is any changes that need to be made for the dosage or just hold it for the entire time until your heart rate comes above 6. Now, with increased contractility, what does it basically do? So when your contractility increases, your cardiac output also increases. And with that, your functionality of all your other organs, including your kidneys, the peripheral uh, organs and the heart it in itself will improve now with digitalis the easiest way to remember is digitalis toxicity is mostly signs and symptoms associated with gi visual and heart so you will notice that you're going into your patient is going into bradycardia or heart rate is low decreasing they would complain of visual, visual dis, disturbances which includes diplopia blurred vision or yellow vision or photophobia they would also present with GI manifestations like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, etc. So these are the signs of your digoxin toxicity. Now when you notice these, it's very important that you let the physician know. In severe extreme cases of digoxin toxicity, we also have digoxin immune fab, which is an antidote. Now, many of our patients could be at home with digoxin. So what are the education that we are expected to provide to them for home care of someone who is on digitalis therapy? First and foremost, check your pulse before you take the medication. Teach them how to check the pulse. Tell them what is a normal range of pulse. Let them know to call the doctor if the pulse is less than 60 or more than 100. That's the first and the foremost thing. Second people would have increased probability of developing digoxin toxicity when they have electrolyte imbalances, particularly if you have hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, or hypomagnesemia, you would have uh, increased risk of digoxin toxicity. Encourage or educate your clients to eat food which is rich in potassium. When I'm talking about food rich in potassium, we're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables fruit juices, potatoes, etc. So that is another education that is pertinent to someone who is at home with digitalis therapy. Third and most importantly, help them or educate them to identify the signs of digoxin toxicity. Now, in addition to your clinical presentation, what is a definite way to know that somebody is in digoxin toxicity is to make sure that you have your digoxin level. So the therapeutic range for digoxin is 0.5 to 0.8 nanograms per mils. 
and if it's above 2 then it is toxic. So above 2 nanograms per mil your patient is in digoxin toxicity. Uh, treatment is again symptom management, antidote therapy and withholding the drug.